Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to episode three. It is me and you today. I know I did it a little different because you probably would have thought that on episode one would have just been me and you, but I wanted to shake it up a little bit and there'll be times when it's just me and there'll be times when I have my special guest here with me. And I thank God for those ladies that are lined up and they have some amazing stories and testimonies to share with you about just how good God is and how they allow him to be the head of their life, no matter how busy it appears that they are. For those of you that are here with me for the first time, my name is Carmela Williams. Please drop a one in the comments. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Carmela Williams and I do a lot of things, but the one thing that I'm most honored to be is a woman of faith, a woman who loves the Lord, who loves to serve women, who loves to empower women and help them fulfill their destiny in the earth. Um, the I Am Loved community podcast was birthed because I get, a, I get asked one question all the time, how in the world do you do it all? And the answer is with God. And I promise you, it's not a cliche. I could not do what I do without him. When I think back over my life and um, coming from being raised by a single mom, being a teen mother, um, having four children, being by myself for a while, having a failed marriage to my journey of restoration of where I am now in my life. If I would have known when I was 15 what I know now at 48, I would have thought that you were lying. There's, I, I just would not have believed that this is the life that I could have because what I saw in the natural and what I wanted in my mind did not match. And I know for a lot of women, um, you see, you want more for yourself. You want more for your children. And, and it's frustrating when we don't know how to make that more happen. It's frustrating when you want something else, but you don't see that modeled around you. That happened for me, not only in the education area, arena, but it also happened to me in business. And I remember when I had this number that I wanted to make in business as an entrepreneur, and it was several hundred dollars an hour. And I remember sharing it with my husband and he was like, baby, how are we going to do that? I said, well, I don't know how but I know we can. And so one of the things that, that helps us to increase our faith is to suspend the need to know how. That's the very first thing I want you to know on this Monday morning or whenever you're catching this. Suspend the need to know how. Faith doesn't always have a plan that you can follow. It doesn't always have a bullet list. Now, if you are a task-oriented person like me and you are a calendar girl and you are used to things being outlined, keep doing those things, but always leave white space. Always leave space in there for God to call it audible. Always leave room in there for God to turn things around. Always leave room in there for a U-turn. Always leave room in there for a detour. Whatever analogy you need, leave room in there for God because we can plan our way, but he directs our steps. And so we submit our plan to him. That's how you get it done. You submit your plan to him. And then whatever way he wants to move it, then I move with God. And he always makes it work. There's some times when he's take dragging me, kicking and screaming. I'm going to be completely honest with you. There are times when I'm like, I know this is not the plan. I know this person is supposed to be with me. I know I thought I was going to do it this way. But when I look back, God always knows exactly what's required. He always knows exactly who should be with you because you can't take everybody with you. So the thing I wanted to talk to you about today the most um, is it does not take all day to connect with God. So even when you're busy, because I'm talking to women who are entrepreneurs, I'm talking to women who have, you may be a homemaker and you got children and a spouse and you're trying to figure this thing out or a single mom that you just feel so super overwhelmed and you don't even know how. I don't have time in a day for me. So how in the world do I, I'm going to add this additional time in, you know, for my Bible study, for my journaling, 
Where's this time supposed to come from? So my message for you today is it don't take all day. It does not take all day. Just know that if you are, think we have children, right? So we have seven children. We have a blended family and we have children in a variety of cities. And so several years ago, we got where we do not allow our vehicles to get below a half a tank of gas. Why? Because if there is an emergency and we need to get to one of our children, we had girls that were pregnant and they were in different cities and different things were going on. If we need to get to our children, if we need to get to our grandchildren, we don't have time to be stopping by the gas station and doing all this other stuff. We need to be able to get in the car and go. That's what it's like with your regular relationship with the father. You get in his presence on a regular basis, but it doesn't take all day. And you never allow yourself to get to E when possible. If you're on E right now, it's okay. When you drop those kids off to school, you go back home, take 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever you need, turn on your worship music. I love to listen to Dr. Cindy Trim sometimes when she's praying, uh, Dr. Cindy Trim prayer, and I'll just allow the prayer to go permeate the house and just flow through the house. Sometimes you need to just shut everything off, turn your phone off for just a few minutes and just spend some time alone with the father. But try not to ever allow yourself to get to a place where you're on E. And if you get to, and if, and if you make sure that you're not to a place where you're on E, it's easier for you to just steal away. And so I'm going to pull this scripture up so that you can see it. Psalm 91. I say steal away. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You want to abide in his shadow. You want to abide in his presence. You want to always rest where God is, right? You want to steal away sometimes. There are some times when my grandmother then and my grandmother's generation would always say things like steal away. And I didn't understand what that meant. But it, now that I have adult children, grandchildren, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a pastor. Um, I have a team uh, of people. They're all pulling on me. And there are some times when I just need to steal away. There are some times when I just need to put my phone on silent for one hour. There are some times when I just need 30 minutes. I don't need the TV on. I don't need the music on. I don't need any distractions. And I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not necessarily reading or anything. I just need to be quiet. I just need to be still. I just need to be in his presence, right? And that allows me to stay connected to the Father. It's like it's like that 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 mobile device that you keep plugged in. And if you're going to be traveling and you're away from the socket, right? You take your portable charger with you because you don't ever want to be to a place where you don't have where you don't have um access to connect. It's the same way in the spirit. You got to dwell in the secret place. You got to dwell with him so that you can abide with him at all times, at all times. And so that's how you connect with him throughout the day. You connect with the father throughout the day by abiding in his presence. You connect with him throughout the day by occasionally turning on your worship music. You will connect with him throughout the day because you've never, ever disconnected. You never, ever allow your battery to run dry. There were times I remember when my children were little and our house was so full that I would just have to go in the bathroom and close the door and turn on the shower and just take an extra long time alone there because that was the only place that I had for just me and the father. Now, there are times when I come home and I sit in the car for 20 minutes before I come in the house, right? Because that time in the car allows me to decompress. It allows me to get my mind focused. It allows me to, to make sure that I've shifted. It allows me to make sure that I've heard from the Father. And so you can spend time with God on a regular basis. Don't, don't, don't only don't think that I'm trying to get my thought together here. Don't think that the only time that you have to spend with God is when you're in church or when you're at a revival or when you go before somebody else to speak into your life or pray. Let me tell you something. 
some of the most precious moments, some of the most life changing moments you're going to have is when you steal away. It's the time that you have alone. There's nothing wrong with spending time in the community. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But even the word that you get in the community, you got to come back by yourself. You got to write it in your journal, especially the things that you, that God has spoke in advance and you're not fully sure how all of this, these things are going to happen. You got to take that time alone and allow God to process it with you. Allow God to reveal to you what he really meant. So those of you that are dreamers and the Lord shows you things. And, and I always tell people when God speaks to you, that you should journal it, you should put a date beside it. And so as God as it happens, you go back and you fill it in so you can see the pattern of how the father speaks to you. You don't have to run behind somebody else or read a book or Google it or try to figure out what it means. You go to the one that gave you the dream. You go to the one that gave you the thought and you spend that time alone with him and he'll show you how to make it happen. He will show you how to get through this day. He will show you how to be mom and how to be CEO. He will show you how to be wife and how to be supportive. He will show you how to do all of these things, but it all happens when you spend time alone with him. And it doesn't take all day for you to steal away, to spend time in his presence. And this is the other question I love to ask. Why do we need a community? Why do we need a community? We need a community because the Bible is very clear about the, the, their safety in a multitude of counsel. So Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And that scripture, that's Bible all day long. So we do need each other. Iron sharpens iron. That's Bible. So you want to be around other strong women of faith. You want to be around other women who are going where it is that you want to go. You want to be around people who have gone where you are trying to get, right? Those people are not your competition. Those women are your mentors. Those women can show you the way. We just have to make sure that we're humble enough to ask for the help that we need. The other side of this is um, one of the things that I see that women do a lot is when we fall in love, we shut down all of our outside support. When we fall in love, we stop contacting our girls. We stop connecting with the people that God has put in our lives for years. We, be, we tend to isolate ourselves and we tend to give our very identity over to the person that we feel like we have this new relationship and this new future with. I just want to caution you in that because anything that pulls you away from the father, can be dangerous, right? It doesn't mean that that relationship is not what God has called for you. It means that we have to check ourselves and make sure that we're staying connected to the father. Because the other thing that I've seen when I watch these types of relationships is that the, the, um, the, the husband or the new boyfriend does not require us to lose ourselves. It's something that we just innately do. I see these young men who still go and play basketball. They still go and play. Um, they still go and hang out with their friends. They still connect with their male friends. And then the girl is home and she's upset and she's wondering why am I here? And I'm the one here with the kids and he gets to go out and do his own thing. But he never asked her to stop living. That's why it's important to steal away. It's important to steal away so that you remember your identity in God. It's important for you to have a community so that you can remember that God created created you in, you in his image and in his likeness. It's important for you to have a community so that you know that you have a voice, so that you know that there are other people out there that need you. Just like there are those that are ahead of you that are your mentor, there are those that are behind you for you to mentor. That this, this scripture here, Proverbs 11 and 14, we need each other. Women of faith, we need each other. Don't isolate yourself. Don't separate yourself. Don't silence your own voice. 
You got to steal away and remember who God has called you to be. How do you get it all done? You get it all done by remembering who you are in God. You get it all done by standing on his word. You get it all done by never backing down from a fight that the enemy throws your way because he is. That's his job. You cannot be part time in your faith fighting a full time enemy that's coming against you, your purpose, and not only you and your purpose, but your children's purpose, your spouse's purpose, your business, the purpose that your business has in the earth. You have to stay connected to God. And how do you do that? You do it little by little. You do it every day. You do it by stealing away in his presence. You do it by just resting in God. You do it in worship. You do it in prayer. You do it in love. You do it every day. You don't need to unplug for 48 hours. You never unplug. You do life with God. You do life in God. And if you stay connected to him, he will continue to order your steps. He will continue to show you the way. He'll continue to make it plain for you. And if you believe that, Drop that in the comments. Drop in the comments. I will stay plugged in. How do we get it all done? We get it all done by just simply staying plugged in. We just we do it by simply staying plugged in to the Father. You stay connected. When you're plugged in, you're always on. Luke 18 says men ought to always pray. So it doesn't mean that you're walking down the road going, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm always saying it in my heart. God, I thank you. I thank you for favor. I thank you for opening that door. There's a gratitude in my heart. There's a song in my spirit. There's joy within me. Even when I don't fully understand what's going on, I do it because I know God is ordering my steps. Be sure to join me here every Monday. The video will drop at 6.30 a.m., but every morning, Monday morning, make sure you come back for a word for working women, for a word for Christian women that's out here doing what God has called us to do and realizing that I don't have to choose between my family and my business, my ministry and my home. God is going to show me how to do it all, and he's going to get the glory.